Welcome back to the channel YouTube. This is Invest in Yourself and my name's Cameron. Today we're going to cover another earnings call out of Square. It's uh, one of these companies I own in my private uh, account overall, but I want to kind of uh, cover over three topics in the business and show two different very stories in the early day of the pandemic as sellers and segment came under pressure due to the lockdown restrictions while Cash App's consumer segment saw surging usage from people looking to send money and increase digital world. And some of these segments we're going to go over today, YouTube, is uh, really related in the price action the last few days, especially after the earnings. And looking at first, we're going to go, what was the big catalyst for the Q3 earnings and why it was such a major beat? And second, looking at their uh, GPV, their gross payment volume and other financials related to the Q3 beat. And the last, kind of my thoughts on Square and will I continue to buy. So let me know down in the comments what you think of the video. I appreciate every one of my new subscribers and thank you so much for the support. And I'll continue to knock these out. And hopefully you can give me some feedback where y'all would like to see some videos or any other suggestions of businesses that y'all think are pretty interesting. I'll try to cover as best I can. And I try to give you as much transparency as I can, especially with a public account and my private account. So just let me know what you think and we'll roll right into it. So going over the big catalyst on Q3 earnings and major beat, and I'll go down to page 10 here, was Bitcoin overall. And the Bitcoin was, uh, if you look overall, Square's third quarter um, report cash app overall, we can see down here at bottom, it shows Bitcoin, you know, derived revenue of $1.63 billion in Bitcoin marked a massive increase of more than 1,100%. And when it compared to the same period in 2019, it smashed it. So Bitcoin revenue was by far the largest component of Cash App's overall revenue generation of $2 billion with all the other revenue streams totaling around $453 million or just 22% total. And we'll get in that to the middle, middle of the video of the other financials. Just want to cover the big catalyst, YouTube. So Cash App's functions are as a broker for Bitcoin purchases and buying on the behalf of the user and adding a little small fee for transactions. The report notes that some of the increased Bitcoin sales were due to the app's auto-invest tool launched in May this year, which allows users to do recurring daily and weekly purchases of the stock or Bitcoin. Bitcoin revenues produced a $32 million in gross profit for the third quarter and increased a 15 times from previous year's profits of $2.1 million in the same period. That's kind of that's a huge increase of YouTube overall, just the Bitcoin. And it shows you in some of my previous videos how much I'm a bull in this app and you know how they're so lenient with some of the uh, transaction fees and uh, you know their volatility fees sometimes they charge a little um, a little I would say high but again for the most part we don't get a lot of those volatility fees for the most part it just depends what Bitcoin's doing but back to the number of squares total Q3 revenue was more than 3 billion up 140 percent from 2019 in which Bitcoin comprised more than 50 percent at that time and the total Bitcoin revenue of all of 2019 was around little less than 350 million with a gross profit of 5 million and no just quoting the report it also noted you know looking at the 50 million bitcoin you know that's around and they have a, a bitcoin paper here this white paper they have that they invested in a little over 4700 bitcoin as a treasury asset which is now worth northward almost to 75 million dollars and the company's purchase was based on the B belief that the cryptocurrency are as an instrument of economic empowerment in alignment with the company's purpose. And YouTube and Square is strictly expect to hold this investment for the long term. So I love a company, YouTube, that's living to their word and um, the stuff that they offer, they're actually taking a piece of that pie themselves. And that's why I'm bullish on Square as a company and how it offers and gives competitive rates to buy Bitcoin overall, YouTube. And I've discussed in other videos how Square leverages Bitcoin transactions in the Cash App to make p massive profits when it comes to giving it back to the consumer and not charging high transaction fees. And obviously as well, them being Square put their money where their mouth is because, again, they end up uh, purchasing you know, $50 million of the Bitcoin. So, again, I love this in the company and offering some of those. Uh, they don't believe in trying to make it a big gross uh profit on bitcoin they're just smart you know charging small and uh 
small transaction fees due to the uh, volatility of Bitcoin itself. But looking now into the uh, GPV and some of the payment stuff going over here, and we we'll actually go to page three and look at that. So page three, here we go to the shareholder total. So GPV in the third quarter amounted a little over $31 billion. Moreover though, the figure improved 12% year over year, which can primarily be attributed to strength across the seller ecosystem during the reported quarter. Solid momentum across sellers in international regions remained a positive. So, you know, seller GPV looking at it, was around up 46% year over year and contributed 11% to the overall GPV of the company. So when I say GPV, if y'all didn't understand, if I didn't break down the acronym, that's is overall looking at gross payments. So that just wanted to show you to break that down if I was kind of getting y'all lost. But additionally, the, profi uh, the proliferation online and sales international region was also positive back with, by with GPV with online uh, channels soaring 60% year over year. And looking at the company's generated transaction revenues overall, we can see right here, the company was generating transaction revenues of uh, northward of 925 million, up 13% year over year. And the company generated 448 million revenues from this category, surging 60% from year ago quarter. This improvement can be attributed to a strong performance by Cash App, which contributed about 354 million to the app in which uh, categories top of the line for the figure. So it was up 154% year ago, the quarter year ago when it came to the improvement for the cash app. But again, this was driven by a robust cash card spending and growing instant deposit volume in the reported quarter. So per management YouTube, gross profits grew 59% from a year ago quarter to 794 million. And now going down to operating expenses came in at 745 million and jumping 59 percent overall year over quarter so operating expense i think we just passed there we go yeah prior year over quarter product development expenses were around 227 million up 34 percent year over year primarily due to the rising engineering data science and design personal cost now looking at the balance sheet and Looking over as of September 30th of cash and cash equivalents, balance was up 2.1 billion, up from 1.9 billion as of June 30th, 2020, and short-term investments were around 762 million in the reported quarter, up from 714 million in the previous quarter. And looking at the long-term debt was around 1.76 billion, decreasing from 1.77 billion in the previous quarter. So. It's a good thing uh, YouTube overall, Square is uh, taking some money and putting uh, some of the uh, their operating costs and some of their uh, flow back into the money. So we're going to see some of that debt not getting paid off as fast because it's still a, a high growth stock and they're still growing and there's uh, they're trying to get to a uh, cash a cash positive company over the next two years again. This company has come a long way in the last three or four years. And again, so you can't expect it to have a pristine balance sheet when we're in a big, huge growth phase. So it's a positive when I see and they're taking cash and using it into when it comes to like product development and engineering and data science and design personal cost. It's a good thing. We are seeing operating expenses that they're putting money back in the company overall. But again, my thoughts, would, I will continue to buy. I believe that Square is a secular growth opportunity is too big to ignore even from here youtube company is soaring like another aspect here the cash app engagement with potential for acceleration and user growth down the road as square steps up market spending now looking at international volumes were up plus 46 percent on the year and now we're looking at 11 percent seller gross margins overall and up 6% two years ago from their gross payment volume, showing that it also proves that the company's payment platform can be successful outside of its home market, which is the United States. YouTube, I'll continue to see big opportunity ahead of Square, given that during the third quarter, there was a 53% increase on a year-over-year -year basis in the number of applications for new businesses with planned wages. 
And now I'm going to just kind of cover over transparency of my private account, which I don't show this much. But again, I want to preach on a company that I do hold. I'm not going to preach on something that I don't believe about just to make a video. I want to give you all full transparency. This is uh, I'll continue to invest in this company for the long term. Whenever there's short term negative macro and micro pitfalls in the market, I'll invest. And I only have kind of half of my position built out. And I wish I would invest a little heavier uh, five and six months ago like I was. But again, I had other opportunities that popped up. But again, I do believe this is uh, anytime where you, you have a long term you know, horizon, anytime you get under $200 in Square, especially you have that long term outlook, I think it's a, a great buy. And, uh, and I, I think we're going to see some you know, short-term volatility downward in the next couple months. And anytime you can get like we were a week and a week and a half ago or so last week, it was getting down into the 160s and 170s. You should have take that opportunity to buy Square, especially if you're a long-term investor, especially because it's a very um, great company when it comes to growth, disruption, and innovative overall. But again, I'm going to continue to build my, build my position. And again, I... I'm very bullish on this stock overall when it comes to me being a Bitcoin investor. I love the app and I use it for the transactions of buying Bitcoin and transferring it out to my digital wallet. And that's why I'm uh, bullish on this company overall. But let me know down in the, uh, the comments what you think of the video. And um, are you a uh, Square business stockholder or do you uh, purchase Bitcoin through the app? Let me know down in the comments what you think of Square as a business and where do you think it's going. So thank you so much again for coming to watching the video and supporting the channel. And remember, invest in yourself and thank you so much for the support. Bye-bye.